Hey everybody, what's up? Welcome to the next episode in Manipulate This. Today, we're gonna talk about three different techniques that you can use to color grade your photos in Photoshop 2020. Let's check it out. So, I have this uh, stock image of a landscape that I got from storyblocks.com. I mentioned that in my last video, and I will put a link to that in the description below so you can check it out too. Storyblocks is a really cool website where you pay a small monthly subscription fee and you have access to tons of great stock footage, uh, vector images, stock images, all sorts of really cool stuff for you to use in your videos and your projects. So uh, let's go ahead and jump into it. Today, I want to dive deep into three different color grading techniques that you could use for any of your pictures. With Photoshop, there are many different ways you can color grade your images. There's not just one true way, which is awesome. Um, I have a few different techniques that I like to use. Each produce different results and each kind of have a different workflow. So today we're going to walk through each of them and let's see what we can come up with. So the first is going to be using solid color along with selective color. Okay. So to start, we want to make sure our background is clicked and not locked. And we're going to go down and create an adjustment layer. We're going to start with a solid color. Now what I like to do is Actually, before I even do this, let's look at the image and see what colors we have. So we have some thick, rich reds from the flowers. We have some lush yellows and greens, and we have blue from the sky. So what I like to do is kind of paint with the solid color adjustment layers to kind of create a beautiful color grade. This is the more painting way of doing your grading, as I like to say. So if you don't just want to slab on a filter and you kind of want to more manually touch up certain spots and kind of bring certain colors out, bring out certain luminosities and things like that, even maybe change the hue, um, this is a great way to do it. So we're going to go to adjustment layer, create a solid color layer. And since we're kind of want to do the flowers, let's do a kind of a blood red like this. So we also want to change this to we can do a lot of different things since you know we're kind of free to do whatever we want as far as color grading. Um, you could do color, but I actually like to work with multiply. And the reason I like to do that is because even though it focuses on the darks, the way you can paint with it is really fun. So I'm gonna actually invert the mask by hitting Control I while selecting the mask. Control I, boom, okay? Now I'm gonna hit my brush tool or B and remember to toggle back and forth with your mask between using the X key. So right here, you can go between black and white. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of just turn my flow down. Maybe let's do 5%. And I'm just gonna kind of go over this back area. This isn't to kind of like fully paint it in, but it's just kind of bring the reds out a little more. You can kind of just really loosely go over some of these areas that are thicker, not flicker flicker, thicker with flowers, right? We're kind of just adding in some ambiance and some color. Like I said, this is much more the painter's way to color grade. Okay, there we go. I'm, I'm kind of liking that, all right? So next up, let's tackle the sky. Again, for the sake of doing a tutorial, I'm not gonna take an elaborate amount of time and make sure everything is perfect. I just wanna make sure the ideas are cohesive enough that they get through to you and you can utilize them for your own projects. So that's my goal. So let's make another adjustment layer, a solid color adjustment layer, and we're going to do the sky. Let's do a nice blue. Yeah, that looks great. So kind of same thing, control I, and we're also going to do this as a multiply as well. Again, you're free to use any adjustment layer, or excuse me, any blend mode that you prefer. I just like multiply because it's stylistically and artistically, it's what looks best to me with how I blend it in. But again, feel free to experiment. And that's the fun of Photoshop, is honestly just experimenting and seeing what you looks best because at the end of the day, art is all perspective and stylistic anyway. So I am going to turn up my flow to 100% and I'm basically just gonna kind of paint in the sky here. Now I know that kind of looks a little intense, which will turn down the opacity here in a minute. All right, now I'm gonna actually lower the flow back down to five, and I'm just gonna kind of loosely, because I don't want these buildings and stuff in the horizon to kind of be thick with that kind of blue, so it's just to kind of, there we go, 
just want to be like, all right, now we're going to turn the opacity down. Maybe for whatever reason, me and 50% just works out great. So I'm happy with that. It uh, d don't look too bad. Maybe we'll turn it a little more. Yeah, there we go. I like that. Now, let's do something to kind of bring out maybe more of the greens and yellows of the foreground. I, I like that. So we're going to go to adjustment layer. We're going to do another solid color adjustment layer. And this time we're going to do a, I don't want like a baby poop, baby vomit green, but maybe something a little more lush. I'm trying to find, I don't want alien green. I want it to look somewhat realistic. So maybe this kind of stern green. And then we'll kind of see what looks best we can kind of paint in. You could also do hard light too, by the way. Hard light's another fun one to play around with. Um, my personal favorite blend modes to do the solid color and selective color, color grading are um, the color. You can mess with some of these. These are kind of like the inversion blend modes. Um, you can mess with some of the just overlay soft light hard lights. I don't really do the ones that affect the lighter end of the luminosity, mainly just because it puts it to such an extreme. Um, multiply sometimes. Well, actually, I use multiply quite a bit. Um, so we can kind of, let's do color for this one. And again, the same thing as I did before. Select the mask, invert the mask with control I. Okay, and we're going to paint it in just like that. Okay, uh, I'm actually keeping my flow pretty low for this one. And that's kind of what I want. And already that's looking much, much better. So as we turn that on and off. Okay, so now it's kind of, the green has kind of overtaking the red of the flower. So we're gonna go hit X to toggle the black. And we're gonna kind of color some of that back in because I don't wanna lose that rich detail of the flowers. Um, if you wanted to spend a lot of time really making this look just absolutely perfect, what I would probably suggest is going in, not on every single flower, uh, but more so focus on these groupings of flowers and really paying a lot of close attention to them. You know, here's a cluster, here's another cluster, here's a cluster, here's a cluster, here's a cluster. You know, just like that and kind of focus on those. That's kind of what I'm doing to bring back a little bit of the red because I don't want it to be too overtaken with green, but I still want to maintain that kind of lush that the green provides. Actually, well, let's turn this up to maybe like 50. Because again, I really want to retain that for this particular color grade. I feel like that's very important. So we'll punch these up. And again, don't go too crazy because you don't want to lose out on the green. Just want to make sure the flowers are preserved. And that actually does make somewhat of a difference. So we have that. Let's also, um, let's play with the vibrance because I feel like for me, landscapes especially really benefit, unless you're going for a specific kind of vibe or a specific filter look. Um, I feel like it strongly benefits from a good pop of the vibrance. So I don't know why I could not find the vibrance there for a second. All right, so uh, we're going to not miss the saturation. See, the thing with the saturation is if you pull it up all the way, the colors get so blown out that it looks completely fake. So, I mean, you can do something similar with Vibrance, but I feel like Vibrance is almost like a, it's almost like saturation light in a way where you can push Vibrance way more without having to worry about blowing out the colors. And even though that might still look a little fake, it definitely doesn't look near as fake as if you blow saturation all the way out of the way, but I'm not gonna pull Vibrance all the way to 100. So we'll start it here. As you see, we pull it down here, it looks kind of gray. So maybe let's pull it up to about here. So it's nice, it looks lush and full, everything's kind of popping. And then to top it off, we're going to do a selective color, which is kind of like the cherry on top for this color grading. Now, what this does is it allows you a little bit more finer controls over the colors. So we're gonna tackle the reds first, and we're gonna start by boosting them we can kind of play around with them. We can, we're kind of pulling at the luminosity right now. So I can make them really pop like this, or I can bring them down here, kind of make them look dull. Both look good in their own respective way. I kind of like the flowers to pop, so we'll bring it down here. Magenta, 
I love that I can change the hue of the flowers. I kind of like them to look a little more poppy like that. Yellows. Ooh, purple. I love that. Let's do that. And then blacks. You can have springtime flowers, or you can kind of pull them down here and make them really dark. I'm okay with kind of having them right about here. Negative 1%. All right, now let's go to the yellows. And what's great about doing the selective color way of grading with landscapes specifically is generally landscapes, you're gonna have your blues, your greens, your yellows, your reds, your blues, all of that because nature encompasses all of those colors anyway. So I feel like you end up with a more evened out, rounded picture color-wise than something like maybe just a brick wall or maybe you know, an urban environment where there's only grays and browns and, and, you know, very limited color tones. So that's why I like doing this specific color grade for landscapes and just nature in general. But again, feel free to experiment and do what you think is best and what you like the best. So I can make it look a little more summertime with the yellows, but I kind of like the cold and the, uh, the almost, it makes the brush look a lot thicker and more springtime, so I kind of like that. Magentas, I think that's a little too much, so maybe pull back there. Yellows. Again, just best thing to do is play around with the sliders, start moving them left to right, see what looks best to your eye. Kind of make it look more overcast and more colder, you know, or you can kind of make it more, to me this looks much more summery, and it actually is only <clears throat> affecting a few of the colors in the entire image. See, it's barely even doing much. So let's pull that here. Black, that almost like, kind of looks like frost. So we'll keep it here. All right, let's go to the greens. Kind of same thing too, make it look a little more washed out. I'm gonna keep it maybe right here. I kind of want to maintain that spring look. Ooh, I like that though a lot. See, if you do that, that's nice, but having those hints of blue in there really just add to the the overall color palette of the image. I think that's that looks really nice. Maybe that. All right, greens, and then cyans. Now we're gonna start affecting the sky and portions of the sky, which I like a really deep looking sky, but not so much where it's overblown. But I definitely like that balance. Ooh, that looks really nice. But so does that too. So maybe right about there. We don't want the sky to be gray. So maybe what if we do this? There we go. I like that. Okay. And then we're going to do our blues. This is kind of just what you want to do. You want to go through each color and just play with it. And you can always go back. Some of them I don't even mess with the blacks and magentas finally, and I actually really don't even mess with the blacks, whites, and neutrals of the image. But for the sake of this tutorial, I probably will, because, you know, why not, right? So, magentas, don't really do much. Yellows, okay, so this ain't doing much. Let's see how much this will even do. Oh, I see. So this will affect quite a bit. It almost kind of... Um, Altering the blacks and whites, now you're almost touching upon the actual shadows and highlights from a color perspective with the selective color. And that's pretty cool. So let's go ahead and maybe add some. This is kind of reminding me of one of those filters you'd see on Instagram. And I kind of like that, but I don't want it to be too that's so too black. I don't want it to pull away too much of the original integrity of the image. So whites ain't doing much. Oh, I, I thought I saw some change there, but I guess I didn't. Nothing. Okay. So that about sums up our color grading of the solid color and selective color. We're going to group this. And as you can see, that's without the color grade and that's with the color grade. So again, we kind of went through and we painted over some flowers. We kind of changed some stuff. Basically, we just utilized color fills that matched the image based on the different colors of the image. And, you know, say, for example, you had this as a, like a mountain background. <clears throat> you would, in my opinion, you do one from the mountain 
you would do one for the sky and the forest if there was a forest around it. In this case, we wanted to tackle the greenery. We wanted to tackle a color layer for the flowers, one for the sky. So it's really up to you what colors you wanna tackle and accentuate and paint in. And then we kind of just did a vibrance to kind of make everything come out more and pop. And then we did a final selective color, which basically just messed with the luminosity, the saturation and all that to kind of just add our final touch to the image. And honestly, that's not a bad color grade. So this is just one of many ways you can do it. So I like this color grade personally. Um, so with that said, let's move on to the second method of color grading, the gradient map way. So to do that, we're going to click off the group one because solid color, okay? We're gonna do a new one and we're going to go down to our adjustment layer and we're going to add a gradient map. Now at first, you'll probably look at this and be like, uh, that's not exactly what I had in mind and you'd be right. So first what we need to do is drag this guy underneath here Make sure we have the adjustment layer selected and not the mask. Click, double click on here on your gradient map. And here you can actually make selections based on your image. So that's what we're gonna do. So we're going to create a custom gradient map based on the colors in this image. So again, these are our opacities and we want to just touch the color. So we're gonna start over here and we're going to touch on the highlights. So let's do a kind of like a, a light gray here. And we're going to do the dark part, so maybe down here. So now we just have a pretty standard black and white gradient that's based on the highlight and the shadow of the image. And most of the time, your gradient map, if you choose to do this method, is always going to start off as black and white or black and gray because, well, most images have black and white in them as the highlights and shadows. So now we're going to start touching upon the colors. So I like to start in the middle and build around that. 50, whoops, 50% 50 location. Whoops, didn't mean to do that double click this one and we're going to choose this dark green here and then we're going to do another color over here at 75 percent and we're going to maybe do i don't know what else do we got we got some yellows up here you don't exactly have to do this by 75 percent location in fact let's move this around to 65 okay we're going to do another one over here and we'll do it by 85 and I'd like to select some maybe more colors over here. Kind of get that springtime. That's nice. Yeah, let's do that. So then we're going to go over here. Let's do 35%. I want to tackle the flowers, definitely. Let's do another one over here at 20%. And let's do this one, maybe kind of a purple. If we can even get in there and get it, aha. And then I think last but not least, well, actually, you know what? We'll do two gradient maps. I was thinking about doing one for the entire image, <clears throat> but I think for this one, I kind of just want to target the foreground and we'll do the sky as a separate one. So there's really no specific method. Like you don't have to do it this way where I did it at this many location points and I did it in this exact color pattern. I just kind of wanted to paint in somewhat loosely based around dark to light. So I have my color flowers in here. I have the grass and I have the way it fades. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect dark to light. I just want a gradient map that is full of a lot of the primary, you know, um, colors in the uh, image itself. So with this new gradient built, that's custom, we're going to hit OK and we're going to go over here, invert it, okay, and we'll bring it back up here. See, the thing is, if you had your gradient above this image when we're trying to do it, it would not let us select the colors of this image. So that's why we had to drag the adjustment layer underneath the main layer so we could actually select the colors of it to make the gradient map. Hopefully that makes sense. So now with our mask selected, we'll hit the X key to make sure we're on white because now the entire mask is blacked out. And we can actually kind of just paint in our colors in here. Now, while this might look absolutely atrocious upon first sight, 
The beauty of this is we can actually adjust it so it doesn't have to look that way. We can do color, we can do screen, we can do all sorts of stuff. So you wanna find an overlay method or adjustment that actually does look good. That's looking kind of cool. So now we almost kind of have a fall kind of gradient. And again, I strongly encourage you to play around with the gradient order, the colors in the gradient, how many colors in the gradient, because you're gonna get different results. So this, you know, there's really no right or wrong here. It's just showing you different techniques to achieve different results. So, and each color grading pattern and technique is really going to achieve its own results. And it's more what you like the best. So um, now we kind of have like a fall-esque kind of more coloring to our background. So now let's do a secondary one. And this time we're just going to affect the sky. So it's gonna be a lot less. So we're gonna do a gradient map, same thing, drag it under here, take the gradient map, and then we're going to select, let's do, instead of just doing white and black, oh, whoops, you know why it's not working? because I do not have the adjustment layer selected. Now I do. This is why that's important. There we go. I done goofed. Okay, so let's click that, make that dark. And honestly, I think for this, that'll be good. So now we could also invert that, bring the mask back up here, and then we're gonna use the same thing, use our brush, and kind of just paint in our nice gradient filter. And we can also do this, see what looks nice, multiply looks nice, color burn looks really, I really like the look of color burn. Uh, in fact, hard light looks really nice. Ooh, I don't know guys. I really like the dramatic look of color burn, but hard light is also looking nice too. What does color look like? Okay, that's a little more gray which kind of does fit the image, makes the foreground pop. But I think for this, let's do, we'll keep it vanilla with a soft light, okay? I guess I didn't even add much, does it? All right, let's make it a little more dramatic. Let's do the color burn, okay? So we're gonna do color burn, and now we'll just pull down the opacity, so again, my favorite method is you basically make a filter and you really push it to make it really dramatic like that. You pull back the opacity and then from there, I feel you have way more control because then as you slowly bring the opacity in, it allows you time to find the sweet spot with your eyes to see what you like more. And, you know, because if you have it all the way full like that, it's just, it's so blown out that it doesn't look good. But I feel that it gives you a lot more control artistically and I like that. And I always usually find that 40 to 60% is like right where you like it. And that looks, 43 actually looks pretty good. It's just enough blue to kind of bring the sky out, but it's not overkill to where it kind of just consumes the image. So um, there you go, guys. That is the gradient map way of color grading. And this kind of almost looks more like a fall time painting in a way. Um, it's definitely a much different result than the solid color. So we're going to take this put it in a group and we're gonna call this gradient map, okay? So let's look at the difference. There's our before, there's our after, our before and our after. Huge difference, huh? And again, with the solid color, more of a springtime, more gradient map, completely different color pattern. So now we're going to move on to method number three. This one is my personal favorite out of all of them. And I think it's mainly just because the control that you have over the image. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. This is the camera raw filter way of color grading. So with our layer selected, we're going to go up to filter and then camera raw filter, or you can just hit shift control A if you want to access it that way. 
and this brings up the camera raw filter. Now, if you have any experience in Lightroom or you're a photographer and you do photography editing, this should be really familiar territory for you. Um, it is for me, that's why I like the camera raw filter so much. I spent years dinking around like with this in Lightroom before I started doing it in Photoshop, so that really helped give me that foundation. So I kind of know what I'm looking for and what I like. What's really cool with this is we can really go either way with it. We can either you know, make it a really cold, fall, cool image, or we can make it more poppy, summertime. I'm gonna probably go for something in between just to show you the more neutrality of it, but it has the power to go either way. So we're going to do a contrast just a little bit, exposure's fine. I like to pull down highlights, bring up the shadows, but not too much. So one cool thing with the whites and blacks, if you hold down the Alt key, I don't know what it is for Mac, so sorry Mac users, forgive me. So hold down the Alt key, and if you pull up the whites, you can start to see where it blows out the white. So you don't want this, but you want it to write to where you can start to see the colors popping through. So right there's going with blacks, you can do the same thing. You start to pull it back that way. So we want it, well, I guess it's kind of all the way in it. So you want it about right. Usually you want it till you start to see those, those black coming in, but we'll just, uh, we'll set it for right here for right now. That looks fine. Okay, texture, same thing. Pull it up all the way, kind of see what it looks like. Pull it down all the way. To, that kind of looks, that looks nice. It kind of looks like a painting, but it's a little too blurry. But what if, I'm just playing around here. And again, what's nice is to reset the numbers. You can just double click on the slider and it puts it back to zero. The exact same as Lightroom. Okay, so maybe pull up the texture a little bit, pull up the clarity. That looks way too HDR for me. Dehaze, kind of same thing. Okay, I wanna be very, you almost kinda of wanna be really conservative with these three brackets, or excuse me, with these three sliders because it's really easy to just pull them all one way and then, I mean, unless you're going for a really stark, contrast the HDR look, it can be really easy to make it look overly fake. I mean, I love HDR images, but sometimes too much is too much. All right, vibrance, let's push the vibrance. Again, don't, we don't wanna overkill it, just like that about that. And keep in mind, guys, too, I didn't even mention this. You have tools right here you can use, so if I just want to, um, say maybe I just want to, you know, the vibrance of the grass, I can do that, and we'll actually get into that, so. Right now, I'm making the initial adjustments of the color grade, saturation. Um, you know, I feel like with the vibrance, that kind of covers me enough. I feel like if I did any more saturation, it would totally blow it out. So we're gonna go to curves. I love doing the curves, because here you can kind of start doing, start raising, lowering stuff and seeing what looks good. And it's fun to bring certain things out kind of just change things around. And again, I'm just kind of clicking on random points. Again, you can get really methodical, spend a lot of time perfecting every little nuance, but you know what, this is a tutorial. I'm just gonna have fun and do this all by eye. So that's why I'm kind of just whizzing through. Details, I do enjoy the detail section. Um, you can mess with the noise reduction and color noise reduction. Um, I don't really use it too much unless, again, I'm doing like a final print of something or I'm doing an art piece. Then I'll go and take a lot of time zooming in on a lot of the details, making sure things are kept intact. But for this, I'm just going to put a general sharpening. 100 is way too much, so maybe like 40. Just to kind of, I mean, it's already a pretty sharp image, so I just want to make it pop a little more. The color mixer. This is another one of my favorite ones, too. So with a color mixer, you can control the luminance, which is the amount of light each color is, the saturation, which is how saturated it is, obviously, and then the hue. So we'll start with the luminance, and of course, there's the all, So, which I believe just puts all of them into a single row. But I like having this, so 
I can control how bright the reds are. If I want them really dark, if I want them really light, I'll bring them up a little bit. The oranges, see how it's affecting it. Like with this, they almost kind of remind you of roses. But with this, it can be kind of too much. You see way too much white. So I don't want to go overboard. Yellows, that looks really pretty. Greens. Again, kind of the same as the other sliders. If you go too much, it can be really easy to make your image look really funky. So you just want to do it sparingly and just enough to add perfect amounts of accentuation to the details you're going for. Now this, if I pull it this way, as you see, it brings more detail. I really like that into the sky. Uh, blues, that's way too dark, but it, it does look pretty cool. So I can pull here, bring way more of the whites in the sky, or if I pull it back, it does make the sky darker, but as you see, more details are coming through. So I'm gonna do that. This doesn't really do anything. All right, saturation. How red do I want my reds, you know? How orange do I want my orange? We can kind of just keep a lot of these defaults, although I do like the push of the orange. Now I like st to start going this direction with things because you kind of create a different look to your image. Oh, that's really nice. Yeah, I like that a lot. Purples, okay, so I'm not gonna mess with the magentas. The hue, and now we can change. Do we want orange poppy flowers? Do we want little purple marigolds? What do we want? I like the red. It's almost kind of like a, a blood orange. No, it is an orange. Let's make sure that's that. And we'll move this. See, if you do that, it looks kind of fake and funky. That looks too summery to me. So maybe like right around here. I'm gonna keep that the same. All right. So the color grading, um, funny enough, since we're doing the video about color grading, you can actually get really specific with what color you want your midtones, your shadows, and your highlights. <clears throat> um, if you want, when you go to do the camera raw filter, you can avoid all of these other ones and just come down to color grading and just specifically do a color grading, which again, you're just adding a color to the midtones, shadows, and highlights. It's a much more simpler way to get an end result. Um, generally for me, I don't really like to mix these along with the color grading um, just because it takes it too, you know, too far as far as like what the color looks like. And I'm just not a huge fan of that. Um, but, you know, I encourage you to explore and play around. But for the sake of this image, I'll show you what you can do. So a really common color grade is dark blues in the shadows and yellows in the highlights. That's probably one of the most common um, we can tip the balance onto either side of the scale. For now we'll just keep it in the middle of the blending, as you see. How much blend do you want there? We'll, we'll pull it down here. Now it's kind of looking more like it has a filter on it. You know, that's mainly the reason why I don't do it. See, that's with it off. So we'll keep it on for the sake of the tutorial. So optics, this is if you want any distortion. So like maybe if you want it pulled out this way, or if you kind of want like the fisheye lens thing going on, which you know can produce cool results on their own. This would be, in my opinion, if you kind of want more of a panoramic type of view. So you could save it as this and then crop all this out and kind of just have a really cool panoramic wide shot. But we're not gonna do that for this tutorial. So vignetting, this just adds a very, I don't know if you'd call that subtle. I mean, to me, that's kind of subtle. I mean, I guess it depends on your definition of subtle. All right, geometry, I don't actually really use any of this stuff, um, but play around with it. Effects, sometimes it's fun to add grain. I like to add maybe about anywhere between 10 to 20. Personally, that's my personal preference. I like the look of it. And more vignetting. So this is if you want like a really powerful vignette. Let's do maybe negative. And by the way, if you go positive, it is a white vignette, just in case you're wondering why I was dragging the slider to the left. So. All right, and then calibration. This just does some extra final adjustments. I don't ever, ever mess with the calibration. You can, I encourage you to play around with it. 
um, but I generally just leave this alone. So now we have our basic color grade with just the camera raw filter and we could toggle between the two. So this is without the camera raw color grade and then this is with the camera raw color grade. So my opinion, the camera raw color grade is my favorite, but let's take it a step further. Let's actually brush in some extra details so we have a little more control, kind of like with the solid color of what we want to affect and what we don't want to affect. So let's go ahead and do that now. So we're gonna go ahead and we're going to go to adjustment brush. And there's also other stuff too, like spot removal. There's radio filters, gradual filters, even red eye removal too, that was very helpful. Um, there's presets even you can do. I mean, there's all sorts of stuff, guys, all sorts of stuff. Um, again, I really encourage you to get in here and just, just play around with this stuff. There's so much stuff you can add and do. And at the same time, it's also really, ooh, that looks really nice. It could also be really, I'm gonna, I'm gonna add that. It could also be really easy to overdo it on your images. Okay, so I just added that matte filter. I really like the way this looks. It almost looks you know, like cinematic, kind of moody. And if we can actually duplicate it again, that looks really cool, you guys. It looks completely cinematic. And I like that. So. What we can do is let's go again to camera raw filter. And this time, like I said, let's go ahead and paint some stuff in. Maybe bring out some fine adjustment. We can, I mean, you could bring out anything, which is incredible. So let's do some Let's do a little bit of highlighting and All right, so now for this, we're going to do some uh, basic brush adjustment so I'm gonna go ahead and kind of just play around some lighting here and this is kind of just enhance the perceived light okay then we're going to do another one right here if you click this creates a new adjustment layer and we're going to do plus 55 this time and we're on Let's go down to 55. And I'm just actually coloring random spots. This is to kind of just give, look at that. It almost creates a totally different lighting dynamic. But if you're looking at the image just by itself, you're not gonna see where it's lit, but it, it makes a more dramatic moody look. And that's one of the reasons I love Camera Raw Filter. Now, I could have just left it at the edit that I did before I did the matte filter is what I think it was. But I kind of just want to show you the extremes that you can push the Camera Raw Filter to and take not only a color graded image, but then take it even further and just make it really dramatic. Make everything just extreme. And it almost looks like a movie still, like of a modern movie. And it looks really cool. And I, even though a lot of these things, like the whites are kind of blown out, um, I kind of like the look of it, to be honest. It, it's almost like in an artistic way kind of blown out. So let's do a little bit more. We're gonna create another new one and then let's do maybe some dehazing off here in the distance because you know, that's, we wanna make sure we have the horizon in mind. Actually here, let's, I changed my mind. We're gonna lower the brush and we're gonna, just gonna put in a dehaze here. Now dehaze, if you pull it all the way down, creates a fog. But if you pull it all the way up, it's like a stern solid black. I don't like that. So maybe just add it in a little bit on the horizon. It almost kind of reminds me of um, like a really cold spring morning and the morning fog is kind of rolling in. That looks really cool. So I'm not gonna do too much more. I could, but I'm gonna keep it at this. And it almost looks like a beautiful wintry spring 
mesh and just a color bring another sharpness okay and we're going to do one final thing to this image that looks really cool we're going to do one final thing we're going to go over to channels we're going to make a new alpha layer we're going to do a gradient let's make sure we have a default basics just a simple white to gray okay hold down shift boom oh whoops haha <laughs> silly me I had the center one and not the bar one. All right. Now, go back to this layer. And you're going to go to Filter, Blur, Lens Blur. Now, check this out. So, the depth source is based on alpha. So, this means that we're focusing, excuse me, we're focusing that on the focus is going to be based on that gradient map, which means that just like a real DSLR camera, the focus slowly kind of fades out over time, which is what we want. So it almost means we can create the illusion. You know, we're like looking off in the distance like this is doing, although I don't know what's going on here. Oh, I see. Okay, cool. Like it's focusing on here or maybe that it's focusing way back here and the foreground's blurry. Or maybe we just want to center focus on the foreground. And we can actually increase the radius. So we can pull it around here. I think right about there is good. You can kind of toy with the radius to see how much you want it. You can only have a little bit, but I kind of like more of the foreground and focus, if you ask me. Again, pull these to the side, see what you like, rotation. And maybe there's also a little bit of noise. No, that does not look good. Not like I thought it would. There we go. We just want a slight one. So so there we go, guys. This is my final image. Um, as you can see from the back and forth, it is night and day different. But that's because I took it that way. So again, my decision with the camera raw filter was to not only show you what it could do, but I wanted to take it to the extremes to show you the power of what you can create with it. So just making some simple adjustments throwing on a filter two times and making some slight brush adjustments, I've created a cinematic, really dramatic shot based on just a plain old landscape shot. And what's great about the camera raw filter being my favorite way to color grade is you can take this in so many different directions. I mean, you can get so many results using the same filter. So again, I feel like this is the best way and my favorite way, but sometimes People like doing the gradient map because it's easier to use. Other people like doing only a slight color grade. They don't need something so intense and dramatic. And although you can get easier, slighter results with the camera raw filter, some people aren't fans of it. But this is to show you the power of all three and what looks the best. Okay, so before we end the video, let's take one last look at the three differences between the three different techniques. So we started off with the plain poppy field. We added the gradient map which kind of gave us a more slighter fall look to it. We had the sky enhancement and we did a specialized gradient map and we changed it around a little bit. Then we did, we also did the solid color layer, which gave us a more green blue kind of pop feel. It really brought out the greens, really brought out the vibrance. Um, these are more lighter touches and you can go extreme with this, but I just kind of want to do it lightly without having to make a bajillion adjustment layers. And then lastly, I wanted to make a very dramatic, cinematic look with the camera raw filter, which gave us that. Now you might look at this and capitalists absolutely hate it, but I love it to be honest. So um, yeah, that's basically it guys. That is the power of using the three different color grading techniques. So I hope this video was incredibly helpful to you and I hope you're able to use this for your own projects and art designs. So as always guys, thank you so much for watching. And if you found this video incredibly helpful, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more great Photoshop tutorials coming your way only from Manipulate This. Thanks so much. I'll see you guys in the next video.